you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you so much, Madam Chair, for this opportunity to discuss policy priorities critical to El Paso while the committee is working toward the reintroduction of HR2. El Paso is a vibrant border community, home to over 800,000 people. It has seen steady growth over the past decade, but our infrastructure spending has historically not kept pace. Like most of America, our highways and bridges are congested and in disrepair, causing issues for locals who rely on them to get to work, go to school, and more. However, infrastructure issues in border communities like mine are not just problems for locals, but for every American. Our roads are critical trade arteries for the rest of the country, with over $800 billion in trade entering through El Paso's ports of entry in 2019 alone. In short, border infrastructure is national and international infrastructure. While local governments and state agencies like the Texas Department of Transportation have been doing what they can, the federal government needs to step up. That's why I'm urging the committee to consider increasing the border set aside created in the FAST Act for surface transportation program funds from 5% to 10% in HR2. I'm also asking the committee to make this set aside mandatory for border states. There are no, no border members on TNI, and I want to ensure that the committee understands why border communities are so important. High quality border infrastructure benefits not just those who live on the border, but those far from the border as well. We need to give strategically located border communities like El Paso the resources that we need to revitalize our economies, better our residents' lives, and enhance our role as key trade corridors for our country. The other critical element to border infrastructure are our land ports of entry. These ports are just as crucial as our coastal counterparts, with billions in trade crossing by land every day. They also serve a national security interest with customs and border protection using them to facilitate everyday flow and preventing contraband from entering our borders. Nevertheless, many of these ports were built in the last century and are outdated. Such conditions are impairing CBP's ability to perform their mission, leading to significant congestion, long wait times, and security concerns. These delays also pose an environmental and health risk for neighborhoods surrounding the ports because the idling cars spew harmful particulates into the air. Local governments are trying to do their part by investing in and seeking funding for infrastructure around the ports. An example is the Stanton Street Bridge Intelligent Transportation System I'm submitting for the committee's consideration under the surface reauthorization process. Yet because these ports play such a critical role for our national economy, I urge the committee to include a significant investment for inland port infrastructure and technology in HR2 because the federal government has a stake in international trade and commerce. Finally, I'd like to call the committee's attention to colonias, which exist exclusively along the US-Mexico border. Sometimes referred to as the forgotten America, these communities can oftentimes lack suitable roads, access to clean drinking water and sewage treatment. Last year, the House of Representatives moved to include two of my colonia related amendments in the final version of HR2. The first directed the Department of Transportation to conduct a study of Colonia infrastructure, and the second would have established the Colonia State of Good Repair grant program to address Colonia surface infrastructure. I'm urging the committee to include these amendments in the coming version of HR2 with one change. The Colonia State of Good Repair grant program needs to invest $500 million over four years to make a real dent in the infrastructure needs of Colonias across the border. In addition to surface infrastructure, water infrastructure is desperately needed for all colonias. Based on a recent estimate, El Paso County will need approximately $700 million to address colonia water and wastewater infrastructure. While President Biden's American Jobs Plan contains historic investments in these areas, I'm concerned colonias will be left behind or put into programs where they need to compete with other regions for funding. That's why I urge you to set aside water infrastructure funds specifically for colonias and the local governments helming these projects. We must also ensure no local match is needed because putting together a match presents another barrier to access for these already economically disadvantaged communities. Thank you for the opportunity to testify, you before, you to testify before you today, and I look forward to collaborating with the committee further on HR2. I yield back. Thank you, the gentlelady yields back. The committee will now stand in recess for 10 minutes. <laughs>